but me. <laughs> Hi from Florida. Hi, Julie. Oh, Jake, I meant to tell you that your beard trim looks really nice. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. It does. It's funny, uh, when I got home last night from packaging paints, it was like midnight, and I'm talking with Michael, and he said something about how you trimmed it, and I'm like, oh, I knew something was different. I'm like, I should text him and tell him it, was, it looked nice. And I'm like, no, getting a text at like 1230 at night from some <laughs> random girl being like, your beard looked really, really? good today. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, I'll just save that for when I see him next. <laughs> Isaac says, hi, Jake. What's up, Isaac? Whew. What time, what time is it? Is, time. is it really 7.15? Okay. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Let's Make Art. We like to watercolor and we do it every week and we have different projects every week and this is what we're painting today. <gasps> oh, cute, so cute, our little pig. Um, I'm super excited to paint this with you guys and um, if you're new and just tuning in, you can find our outline for our pig on our website at letsmakeart.com. You can just download it straight from our website um, or if you have the kit or the uh, subscription, it should be in your kit in there. So everybody can paint along. You don't have to buy stuff from us to do this with us. Okay. All right. Okay, so, oh, we gotta turn. We'd, okay, sorry, we're gonna see if the AC is too loud. Usually we turn it off. If our AC, the AC just turned on, if you can hear it and if it's too loud, let us know. We'll turn it off. Usually we do. So, comment. Okay. So, painting with us today, we have Molly and we have Courtney. Welcome, everybody. Jake is on camera work. He's filling in for Al, so thank you, Jake. You're awesome. I haven't seen anything on the sound yet, so it's okay. Debbie says it's okay. I can hear it, but it's not too loud. Perfect. Okay, if it ever comes distracting, just let us know and we'll turn it off, because usually we do. Okay. Sorry, I gotta take a breather. <laughs> so the, the colors that we have today, we have three colors. We have black and sunrise pink and antelope brown. So just three colors for today. And the brown brushes that we're using are around six and around two. However, if you look at our brushes, we don't have those and that's because I can't find my box with all of my paintbrushes in it. <laughs> So we're just using random ones that I found on my desk. So it's gonna be fine. It's gonna work great. <laughs> but uh, just, I used a round two and a round six for this. So if you have that, that's great. If not, just use whatever you got at home because that's kind of what we're doing today and it's gonna be fine. It, it's gonna be great. <laughs> okay, before we get started, we are going to say our oath. So everybody raise your right hand and repeat after me. And if you're at home, you have to do this too, even if you're by yourself, okay? Repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. Louder, you guys, louder. I promise not to compare. I promise, I promise not to compare. <laughs> and I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Good job, good job, thank you. We like to start that way because sometimes we get all worked up before we start painting because we're so afraid that we're not going to be good enough or all of these silly things. But the truth is we're really just here to have fun. We're really here to learn. And so that's all we really need to worry about. Everything else, it's just don't worry about it. We're all at different stages. We're all doing different things. It's cool. Okay, we're gonna start with our warm-ups here. Now I put the paint on my palette here in just three different areas. Can, they can see that in the top cam, right? Okay. And I like these palettes because it gives me all of this room here in the middle for mixing. So we're gonna be doing a lot of color mixing today. Um, so let's start with some warm up. So get your scratch paper out. Get a piece of watercolor paper. And uh, your watercolor paper should have a smooth and a little bit more of a textured side. And we paint on the side that has more texture on it. That side is just more absorbent. It, it takes the water better. That's the side you want to paint on. So you're going to take your paintbrush. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do 
um, some washes, some even washes. And washes is just when you're paint, laying down the water and the paint simultaneously. And so I want you to grab your brush, get it wet, and then I always kind of like to hit it off the side of my cup so it's not totally dripping. And then pick up some paint, it can be any color, any color you want. And I want you to do three circles on your uh, paper. So one, and just kind of fill it in. Two, three. I feel like I'm yelling because I'm trying to talk over this. Do you think it's okay? Okay, let's turn it off. Yeah, let's turn it off. Okay. Now with watercolor, usually in painting, if you want to make something lighter, you just add white to it and that will lighten the color. But with watercolor, we don't really need to do that because we actually use the white of the paper. So if you want a color to be lighter, then all you have to do is just add more water. So Julie asks, how do you get the seals off the bottles? So sometimes the bottles have like plastic stoppers in them. Sometimes I just use a butter knife to get those out. I know it's not the easiest way, but I, we seriously just switched all of the bottles so you don't have to worry about those stoppers anymore. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, I just used a butter knife to wedge them out. Okay. So what the next thing I want you to do is if they're dry, which mine are dry, I want you to grab more paint, and you can use a different color. I'll probably mix in a little antelope brown to my pink. And I want you to do circles in between these two areas. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, the, I felt like I was like straight up yelling so you guys can hear me. Okay. And then, so you're gonna do a circle between both of these sections. And the point of this is I just want you to see how with watercolor things are transparent. So if you're using lighter washes, which is what our goal is tonight, is to use nice light washes. And um, when you layer, you're still gonna see those brush strokes, those areas underneath. So go, go ahead and overlap that a little bit more. Yeah. Now if both of your, if all your circles are still wet, then they're gonna kinda like mix and stuff that's okay, but I just kind of want to illustrate, and you can do this a couple of times if you want. Like I can do another one kind of in between here. I just want you to kind of practice, you know, using these really light washes and layering them. Now to get them lighter, all you have to do is add water. So let's say I put this, let's say I'm using antelope and I do this wash right here. That's a pretty dark wash, right? If I want to lighten it up, all I'm going to do is just have more water on my paintbrush. So I really just kind of dip my paintbrush in the cup and then I go straight to the paper and look how much lighter that is. That's just from adding water. So as we paint this, and this is probably one of the hardest things to do with watercolor because if you're not familiar with watercolor, we kind of want to like fill up our brush with paint and just like paint like we do with acrylic or any other kind of paint. But with watercolor, you really want to remember that water is just as important as paint. It's part of the medium. You want to embrace it. You want to love it. You just want to make sure that it's, uh, you're, you're picking up water as you go. You're lightening those things up. Okay. Yes. I didn't realize at first that you had a pink to the brown. I'm like, <laughs> Molly's like, my color is so off. What is going on? I'll just practice that later. <laughs> and also warm up warm ups are a great way to get to know your colors. So um, don't be afraid to play with the different colors here. And I'm going to show you this sunrise pink is a really bright, vibrant pink by itself. This is what it looks like on its own. Now this is such a bright pink that I like to tone it down a little bit for this pig because pigs aren't like neon pink. They have like an earthy, like a brownness or a grayness to them. And that's why we add the little bit of the black, a little bit of that antelope to get a softer pink. It, it's actually really similar to like um, 
skin tone almost how it kind of has that Very fleshy yeah, yeah. fleshy color <laughs> Okay, and then the next thing that we're going to do for our warm up is we're going to start off. I want you to get your brush wet, kind of dab it off on the side. Choose a darker color, like a black or a brown. And uh, we're going to make a gradient, so a dark to light value. And um, so I'm just going to start with going dark on one side here. I'm just going to do like a rectangle. And then I'm just going to rinse my brush off and start off right where I left off and spread that color. And the goal here is to have a dark and then as it goes across, it's going to get lighter. That's our goal here. And sometimes you have to rinse your brush one more time because you want the lightest part to be like barely there almost. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Yes, it's happening. You're doing it, Molly. You're doing it. How are you doing, Courtney? <laughs> Great. Great. Now, um, with this, the thing you have to keep in mind is after you do it, you kind of just want to let it go and it should like kind of bleed on its own a little bit and kind of spread out naturally. But if I take my paintbrush and if I do this area and I'm just going back and forth on it, I'm going to lose my value change. See how that's evening out? Mm -hmm. That is what, when we're trying to do a value change or a gradient from dark to light, we don't want this to happen, right? Because now I've lost my dark to light area. Now it's pretty much one value right here. So um, just when we're doing shading and things like that, we're gonna put our dark color in, we're gonna add water to blend it out, and then we're just gonna kinda leave it. Because if we mess with it too much, it's just gonna even, okay. it's just gonna even out. Makes sense. Okay. I think we're, I think we're ready now. I'm trying to think if there's anything we really need to do. Um, let's actually just take a second and practice getting like a good color for our pig. Um, Cause we're going to start right into that. And so I'm going to take some of my pink and I always like to just grab and pull to like a different area. So I'm going to grab some pink. I grabbed a little bit of antelope. And then you can just test that. So I'm going to test that on my paper. Now that's a pretty tan color, right? This is not, if I'm trying to match this pig, that's a little too yellow for this color. So you just add a bit more pink. May I get some more pink? My oh pen. yeah, your black, your black took over. I would put the pink on that side over there. So take some pink and a tiny bit of black too. And then we'll test that color. Okay, so that's closer to what we're looking for here is some sunrise pink and a tiny, tiny bit of black. It almost gives it like a purpley-ness to it. And then a little antelope. Now mixing colors is kind of a beast. So be patient with yourself and know that all of our pigs on this table and all of your pigs out there are all gonna be different colored and that's okay. We embrace that, we celebrate that, we love that because that makes it your own. Okay? Okay. Okay, great. How are you guys doing? You ready? Getting there, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's let's move on to our pig. Now I already outlined mine. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of go over how I did that while Molly and Courtney outlined theirs. So what you want to do with graphite paper, if you've never used graphite paper before, you want to get your outline. And again, you can just find this on our website under the pig project and just download it. And you're going to put it on your paper. And then I like to tape my um, outline down because that way I can kind of check it as I'm drawing and it doesn't move because once it like moves, it's really hard to line it back up because it's a piece of paper and it's covered. So after you have your outline taped down, you're gonna take your graphite paper and you're gonna put it, there's like a, a darker side and a lighter side and you're gonna put it dark side down. And basically how graphite paper works is wherever you put pressure, that graphite is gonna transfer onto your watercolor sheet. So you're just gonna take, um, you can use a pen or a pencil or even like the end of a paintbrush and you're just gonna follow along the edges. Now, one thing that you wanna keep in mind is 
you want to try and keep your outlines light. So try and do really soft pressure with your um, pen or pencil. Um, Cause if you do it really hard, you're gonna get a super dark line. And since watercolor is transparent, you're gonna see right through that. So I made mine a little dark so you guys can just see what I'm doing as I'm painting and you don't get lost. But if you're at home, yeah, that's great. If you're at home, try and keep it as light as possible to where you can still see it, but we don't want super strong dark outlines on our pig. Okay, yes, that's right. And you just follow, you kind of check, make sure you didn't miss any areas. Um, if you do take it off and you realize you miss like one line or something, it's not a big deal. You can just eyeball it. And these outlines, so what I like to do is I like to do the outline, but then I also kind of mark where there is shadows or where there are highlights to kind of remind me as I'm painting where these things go. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. He's so cute. I'm really excited to paint this guy. Kristen says you're so cute, Molly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so we have the outline of our pig. Now we're doing this pig in four steps. I, I hope it's four steps. I tried to remember what steps I said when I did the last tutorial. I think I got it right, but if I didn't, please let me know. So we have four steps. The first step we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our shadows first. We're gonna kind of establish those darker areas. And then we are going to do a even wash all over our pig a nice light pink wash. Um, and then we're gonna go in and kind of work those shadows one more time. And then we're gonna do our details like our eyes and the nostrils and all of that stuff. That's gonna make our pig look like a pig because until that point, it's gonna look a little creepy because we don't do the eyes till last, but that's okay. Okay, just know, just know that yours is not alone if it's looking a little weird till the very end. So I'm going to start by putting my shadows in and um, I'm going to take my paintbrush. I use a larger paintbrush. So if you're using the six and the two, use your six. And I'm going to pick up some paint and um, I'm adding a little bit more um, like black to this. It's a little bit more on the darker side. But remember that the entire thing, all of these washes are really, really light. So I don't want you to like pick up a big glob of black and then put it on your painting. Remember that we're using lots of water, lots of layers. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go. And Courtney's lucky because she gets to share my palette with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching it. Yeah. Totally <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna start kind of right underneath the ear here on this neck. I'm gonna start by putting my dark here and we're gonna use that same warm up method where we put our dark in and then we just use water to blend and lighten that out. So I'm gonna grab some paint. I'm gonna start here. And then I rinse my brush and just kind of spread this out. And you might be like, how far do I spread? Don't stress about that because we're gonna do another layer on top of this. So just kind of spread it out until it feels like it's um, kind of evened out. The one thing that I do wanna warn you about with outlines that's super easy to do is it's really easy to make it seem like chunky. Like here's a chunk and here's a chunk and here's a chunk. So the best way to do that is to just make sure that you blend things out. Your shadows, you wanna blend those out to where there's not such a strong line or outline. Oh, hi Robin, welcome. Oh, that's so great. I was about to say hello in Canadian and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like I need to. <laughs> hey. Hey, Molly. Hey. Okay, so I put in my shadow underneath my, the ear here and then I kind of blended that out. Very nice. Beautiful work, beautiful work. I love how you can see like the pink yeah. and the brown. Like, 
separating yeah. a little bit. The I colors like might like like change and separate since we're mixing colors here. We're working with a couple colors. There's going to be some areas where, where one kind of pulls more. And I think that's super cool. And we embrace those. Okay, we love that kind of thing. So um, the next shadowed area I'm going to work on is like this chin area. So right underneath that mouth line, I'm going to put that in. I love how his mouth is just a little open. <laughs> He's just saying hi. And then you just kind of blend that out. Now, if your blending out goes a little bit past this like chin outline I have here, that's okay. Don't stress about that. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's good. Molly, what I would say for yours is, I love that you're embracing all of the water, but it might be a little bit too much too water. Too much water. Mm -hmm. So yeah, dab your brush a little bit. And if you have like a puddle of water on your paper, what you can do to lift that off is you just get your, you kind of rinse it so your brush is clean. You dry it off on your paper towel and you literally just lift the water up with your brush and then dab it on your paper towel and dry it off. And you just do that till there's no longer a puddle. Okay. Okay. Yep. No puddle. You got it. You got it, girl. Okay. Now we're going to do the other side of the pig underneath the ear, this part. So this is like the back part of his body that's going away from us. You're going to put that color in, take your brush, blend it out. And since we're all painting with different layers and transparencies here, um, like I might do something, another layer on top of it if I feel like I need it. If you're looking at yours and you're like, no, that's pretty dark, I don't need to do another layer, don't do it. You don't have to follow me like to a T because um, it's all of our own paintings. So just kind of like be aware that like, yeah, yours you know, might be darker than mine. So if I do another layer, don't do that on yours. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're just going to keep going around and putting in these shadowed areas. So I'm going to do the inside of my pig ear here. And this one you have a little bit more leeway in terms of like darkness because this is one of our darkest areas is on this inside of this ear. And the reason why it's so dark is because um, there's a hole within our ear and it's going into that hole, so it's going away from light. So that's why it's, it gets darker as it gets closer to this area right here where that hole is. But we're going to do a few layers on that ear too. The other thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing this watercolor is if like, let's say I'm like, oh, I want to do another layer on my ear right here. But if it's super wet, then um, your layer that you're adding on top might just like bleed and blend out. So if you want to make an area darker and it's not doing that, then your area just might be too wet. So just give it a second to dry, move to another spot and then come back to it and darken it up. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to mix some more flushy pink over here. I'm getting some. Too. It's good. good. It's good. How are you guys feeling so far <laughs> on your pig? It's looking great. Okay, I'm just going to do the other ear. Start dark, rinse your brush, blend that out. Just 
Jennifer says she's watching from Southern Oregon coast while on vacation. Oh, look at you. That's, That's awesome. Fun. That's so great. There's no pigs there. I haven't been to Oregon. There's no pigs in Oregon? Oh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Molly, what? Yeah. Why not? They fall off the cliff. They're extinct. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't think I've ever been to Oregon. My husband has. He went to Ashland because he was in drama in Ooh. high school. Major. He was uh, super into drama. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Now we're gonna go towards like this eye socket area here. So you can kind of start underneath the eye, kind of around the eye. And usually when you're painting any animal or any person, most of the time, there's going to be a shadowed area around their eye. And that is because um, it's our sockets, right? Like our bones are sticking out, which is why like, that's how we get the shape of our face. But everybody has eye sockets and then our eyeballs like, so our eyes sink in and then our eyeballs kind of pop out. So we always have that shadow. That sounds so vulgar. It, <laughs> vulgar, does it? I don't know. Your eyes sound You mean scientific. <laughs> you mean accurate. No. But so everybody has that shading kind of underneath and on the top because everybody's eyes are a little bit sunken in and then the eyeballs themselves are popping out. No, a little Halloween. A little Halloween. You know what? We're getting close to fall. It's fine. I'm ready for fall surprises on this painting. Oh, we have some guys. fall. You wait till October oh. box. Let me tell you. I just finished designing it. It's going to be good. Okay, so I kind of did one little eye socket area. I did the other one. And then I'm going to do the end of this snout kind of right here. And the reason why we're shading this kind of snout area is because it's sticking out from the face. Um, it's its own little entity that's kind of coming out. And so we have to show that it's its own form. If we were to leave this as the same value as this or this, then it would look totally flat and it wouldn't seem like the snout itself is forming outside of the face or kind of coming. You know what I'm saying. Jake, you get it, right? Yeah. Protruding. Protruding. Ooh. Molly, yeah. coming in with these words. Yes. Every time. Now it's at, it's at this moment that you're looking at your pig and you're like, this dude is looking creepy. Yes, he is. He is. That's okay. He's looking a little Halloween-y himself. It's going to be fine. Okay, there's only a couple more uh, areas we're going to do really quick for the shadow. There's some like underneath the like neck area right here, right in this middle part here. So it's gonna kind of overlap this other area that we already laid down, that's okay. Just make sure that the middle part is the darker area. And I'll show my reference photo here so you can see what I'm saying. Here's the darker shadowed area, here's the darker, here's the darker, and right here is where it's lighter. So if you have that reference photo handy, always refer back to that wall painting so you know what the heck I'm talking about. I always have a reference photo. Usually I have multiple ones while I'm painting, so I can always be like, wait, where is the shadow? Where's the highlight? All of that stuff. Is that rain? I think it is. Yes. <laughs> so good. If you're not in Missouri, Especially Hamilton. We're back in the East Coast, and you're yeah, not wanting the rain, but yeah, we, we need it because our county is in severe drought. So when we are seeing this rain, we are getting so excited. Okay, and I think we're gonna do a little shadow right here, just kind of where the ear meets that head at the top. Same thing on the other side. It just these kind of little light areas. Remember to blend them out. I feel like this painting is really like just about finesse and soft touches and little hints of something here and there. <laughs> oh, 
like the word finesse. It's such a good it's word. A word. Like painting with the colors of the wind. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing. We're painting with the colors of the wind. I just heard Pocahontas. Yes. <laughs> Jake, why don't you sing that song for us right now? <laughs> really? Molly will dance, Molly will dance for us. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I said I am Pocahontas. Oh my gosh, I thought you said you hated Pocahontas, and I was like, oh, no. girl, you need to check yourself, because that is an excellent movie. Robin's asking, what kind of watercolor paper do you recommend? So watercolor paper that I personally use and that we include for all of our kits is the Canson watercolor 140 pound cold press. Now this watercolor paper is not super high quality, okay? I'm gonna admit that, but let me tell you, most of my paintings, like 95% of my paintings and illustrations can be done on this paper and it's super cost effective. So it's worth it to me. Um, but if you really like watercolor paintings that are super water heavy, then go for arches. Arches is excellent. They're pretty expensive, but uh, their paper is just super high quality and they can really take all of that uh, water and hold a lot more without bending and warping. This paper, you'll notice that if you add a ton of water to it, it starts to warp and bend, which is why I usually like to paint with it still kind of on the pad because one side is glued down. Another thing you can do is just tape the outside of your paintings. Okay. Let's see, so we've finished step one. That's it, you guys. We're like a quarter done with this painting and it's looking great. The second thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a really soft pink light wash and do an even wash over the entire pig. But there are a couple areas that we're gonna avoid. One of them is the eyeballs, the nostrils, and the little like rings that are by the nostrils, okay? So go ahead, grab your brush, still use your bigger brush since we're doing large areas here. And remember, this is a really light, soft wash. And you're just gonna kinda go through and just start filling in this pig. Now, um, another thing to keep in mind is your painting is gonna kinda inform you as you go. So I just added a really light wash to mine right here. But for me, like you could barely see that, right? That shadow is too dark for that light wash. So I'm just gonna go in and do a little bit of a, like still a light wash, but still that you can see it. And then that matches the first color that I put down more, like the first value. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So as you go and you add different values, they're gonna kind of inform each other. Keep that in mind. Now, if you're new to watercolor, you're like, that's a really hard concept. It is. So um, if that overwhelms you, just ignore it and keep doing what you're doing because you're doing great. Just don't paint the nostrils. Yeah, just don't paint the nostrils <laughs> or the eyeballs. <laughs> don't do that. Even if you do do that, it's not a huge deal because we paint with black over it, but it's just easier if you avoid it. Another thing that could help you while you're painting is the actual direction of your brush strokes is also kind of helpful. So if I were to go in with my pig, and even while I'm doing the slight wash, if I just am doing this up and down, that's gonna flatten my pig. Slightly, slightly, but it's still gonna do it. So you almost want to like follow the shapes of the pig as if you were painting on the pig itself. You have to kind of imagine like, okay, I know that this snout is actually like in person, it's kind of rounded. So my brush stroke is gonna be rounded as I fill this in. This eye socket is a little bit rounded. So you wanna follow the form as you're painting. And that would just help you because sometimes with watercolor, it's so transparent that these brush strokes we can see. So you wanna make sure that you're kind of following the form of this pig as you go. I'm 
fallen in love with my pig. He's looking good. <laughs> Are you guys loving your pigs? Yeah. Let's for sure name our pigs at the end. It can't be Babe or Wilbur. It can't be Babe. <laughs> Those are already oh, real pigs. Okay, now I'm going to get to thinking. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I didn't do the snout itself. You can do the snout, just not the, um, the, nostrils. the nostrils or the little circles by the nostrils. Remember, these are still just light washes. Ooh, my pig got a little pink there. That's okay. I got a pink, I got a really nice pink pig going on. Okay. That's step two. You guys, we're halfway done with this pig. How are you feeling? Okay. Yeah. Real fine. They're looking good. They're looking great. So if you're just tuning in, we just finished step one and two where we put in our shading and then we put in our even wash. And now we're gonna go into step three, which is we're gonna kind of fill out those shadows a little bit more, right? Because since we added the wash and since we did a couple layers, they probably evened out a little bit. And we wanna go in and define them a little bit more. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm still using my big one because I'm still doing larger areas. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of a darker color. So I want it to be darker than the wash that I just laid down. You can either accomplish that by maybe adding a little bit more black or antelope to the mix or by having a little bit more paint on your brush than water. I feel like I'm using a lot of pink. Oh yeah. yeah, usually we use do like a ton of, like you usually have a ton extra. Don't be surprised if you're using all of this pink just because it's super light and so you tend to kind of go through it. Okay. Avis says pigs will sunburn. I think mine does have a little bit of a sunburn <laughs> going on. <laughs> do they really sunburn? Yeah. Do you have to put sun. suntan lotion on? I don't think you put suntan lotion, but you have to make sure they're like mudded. Shh, mudded? Yeah. There's mud. Oh, duh, they have mud. Them. Okay. They also don't sweat, so they, that's another way to stay okay. for pigs. Okay, okay. Mud. All right. So um, I'm just going to kind of go over the, at the areas that I shadowed in the first step. I'm just going to go over those same ones with this darker wash. So I'm just going to start underneath this ear here. Roman said you should call her Rosie. Oh. Rosie! That's a cute pig name. Perfect. Oh, I love her. Raven, thank you for thinking of my pig name for me. It's I perfect. Have uh, you have yours? Yeah. What's yours? Piggy Tuscadero. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, don't worry. Molly, take your time. I have a feeling it's just going to be great. <laughs> I'm oh, looking, yeah. She'll come up. I'm looking forward to it. So you take your time. Oh my gosh. He is so. He's so rosy and I love it. Okay, now I'm going kind of underneath this chin part, putting in those, those shadows and remember to kind of blend out those edges so it's not super sectiony. Then I'm gonna do this back. This back area right here. And it's during this kind of step that you should start seeing your pig kind of emerge a little bit out of your paper. It's now, you know, creating form and it has dimension and it's, you know, becoming its own thing. It's super exciting. So I just did my second layer of shadows um, underneath the pig, underneath, <laughs> underneath the, the ear. Underneath the ear, underneath the chin, and on the other side of the ear, that body that's kind of going away from us. Now I'm gonna go in and um, do this um, lip chin area.
And remember to blend that out. And if your blending goes past this chin outline, that's okay. It doesn't have to stop hard at that line because you want that blending to like make sense still. He is looking cute. You got a nice color on yours. It's like a nice peach. Yeah, that is a great. I like yeah, yours. I oh, I actually really, yeah, let's do a chicken. Should I just move him to the center? Yeah. Okay. So here is Courtney's. I think it's looking so good. I love how light her layers are. I love how light her washes are. It's very delicate. And um, I feel like that's what I was going for, but that's okay because we're not comparing work. And um, she has some great shadows. We're gonna build some of this up. Um, the only thing I would say here is this section that you have going on yeah, to the left. Yeah, that's it. Nothing. So so what's happening here with that is this is an even value. See right. how there's not like a dark to light spot? Yes. And our goal is to have it dark and then lighten up as it gets to Towards this the, the this snout. Okay. So there's a couple things we can do. One thing is you can try and lift off some of the color already. So we're going to go near this nose. We're going to just get it wet. And then see if we can pick it up with their paper towel. Now, I don't think that actually really did anything for that. So another thing that we can do is just do another darker layer right to make here. make it even darker. Make it darker on this side. Okay. That's right. And then when you blend it out, just be very careful not to work back and forth too much. Okay. Because we do want that value change still. You do. But it's looking great. Oh my gosh, look how, <laughs> look how dark mine is compared to yours. It's so funny. Okay. He's looking very uh, thick. Okay, yes, this is Molly's. He oh, is looking nice and awesome. thick and rounded and full. I think his coloring is awesome. We have some nice um, hints of yellow in here from our antelope brown that's kind of coming through. Uh, your shadows are looking really good. I like how we're, you know, it's dark here, it blends out. That's looking good, kind of spreading out here. Um, same thing on your nose. This is kind of all one value, and we want to make sure it's the darkest area here and then lightens up as it gets to that um, tip of the nose. Um, similar to how you have this lip. See how there's that beautiful transition right there? Yeah. We want that same thing on that side of that nose. Okay. So kind of just run through it one more time and just kind of be a little bit more careful when blending out so it doesn't even out. And then I'm sure you just haven't gotten it to it yet, but we need to darken those ears. Oh, yeah. But, um, but it's looking good. Okay, why thank you. And like I've said, since we're mixing, all of our pigs are different colors and have different, um, like a lightness of values and that's okay. It's just kind of being aware. Sometimes you have to do something the first time and then you're like, that turned out a little bit darker than I wanted. I'm just gonna do it again and I'll just be more aware of that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay, so for the inside of the ear, I'm gonna start really darkening that up. So I'm really just doing a mixture of black and antelope with a tiny bit of pink so it doesn't seem too separated. And I'm gonna start putting in dark right here and then rinsing my brush and blending it out. Because we want this area to be pretty shadowed. I mean, and this isn't done, but already just looking from this ear to this ear, this one already has more depth and form just from doing that little shadow on the inside of the ear. Now I have some little lines here on the outline for this pig and you can pay attention to those or you cannot, but I just, I basically put them there because inside of ears, um, there's little, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Hairs. <laughs> no, they're not the hairs, they're like folds, yes. Folds or, you know, gosh, what is the word I'm looking for? We're going to go with folds, not hairs. Jake, that's we're not what we're doing. 
But we're going to kind of show the different um, kind of creases in the ear. Creases. Wait, did somebody already say that? Courtney, yes. Oh, Courtney. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Courtney. <laughs> you said it and I like just Wait, like... <laughs> My husband doesn't listen to me either. So Oops, sorry about that. Don't talk deep enough. Yeah, yeah. That's what we need. Cartilage. Yes. Cartilage. Ah, Excellent. Yes. That's a good anatomy. That was my yes. second guess. That was your second guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's just kind of what I'm trying to communicate there is that there's different cartilage and what was the word you said? Crevices. Crevices. No, wait, was that Crevices. it? That wasn't it. I said folds. Uh, she said creases. 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 <laughs> Different <laughs> creases. <laughs> you guys, we gotta pay attention better. I <laughs> Okay. So I got the shadow in on my ears. I'll probably do one more run of that, but I'm gonna let that dry now, for now. And I'm going to move on to a different area and I'm going to work on my nose. That same advice that I was telling you guys, I need to do that on mine. So I'm going to put in that and then kind of softly blend that out. My lip here. <laughs> I'm just using a lot of water here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You're really embracing the water. That's fine. We love that. Just as long as you're kind of aware of it. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a shadowed area on, um, I'm going to go back and do my eye socket on my pig, but I'm going to switch to my two um, just so I can get a finer area because I'm working a little bit smaller area than this huge pig. But that's because I'm using around 10 and not around six because I can't find my paintbrushes. So if you're still using around six, that might be fine to work with still. Just, Are you just loving your pig so much, Molly? I love him so much, but he kind of, this pink spot just kind of looks like he messed up shaving. <laughs> Which one on the side of this his nose? This part right here. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> right here? Yeah. Okay. I know mine looks deaf too, right next to me. Mine's so orangey compared to your guys. Yeah, you're just using a little bit more antelope in your huh. in your mixture. That's all right. So I'm just taking like a damp brush and really just trying to blend some of this out. Kind of work. And then let that dry and then try it again. Because our washes are so soft, like that hard line still might be there as you go. Okay. You're, you're just gonna have to embrace that, okay? All right. Okay. And it's just you know, a little clumsy. <laughs> and most of the time when we're painting something and there's one little area that's bothering you, I can pretty much guarantee that most of those other people that see that are not even going to notice that. So a lot of it sometimes is just like stepping away from your painting, putting it farther away from you, getting up, taking a break, walking around for a few minutes and then coming back to it. Because sometimes we get like so into the painting and so on top of it that we get obsessive about some little parts that actually aren't um, distracting at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, we are focused now. We're paying attention to our shadows. And now um, I'm going to kind of go through, and uh, we're still working on our shadows here, but it's starting to seem uh, really blocky to me on my painting. So that's always when it's kind of a good idea to just take a damp brush and start just blending out some of the edges here, blending out some areas so it's not, um, like I said, so it's not so blocky. I think I hear that rain again. Oh. And I love it. I love it. What do you guys call a pig thief? A pig thief? Yeah. What? A hamburglar. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, I'm going to have you on the show every single week if you're coming with material like this. <laughs> it is gold. Pear tree. <laughs> okay now I'm gonna start working on the nostril a little bit now if you're looking at the nostril itself you'll see that there's actually more of a shadowed part in the middle and then the top part it's like a lighter pink and then there's a shadowed do you guys see that mm -hmm. yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and start working that in on my um, painting so I'm going to get a little bit of a darker color here put it right in the middle just like that and then just kind of blend it blend that out now the other thing with watercolor that's pretty cool especially when we're working with such light layers if you if you want an area to have a little bit of an extra pop of color like on the tip of this nose here on this pig that's a pretty bright pink so that's when I just took the sunrise pink almost by itself and just kind of went along the top here to get a nice pop of pink. And you can do this on any area of your pig. If there's a section where you're like, man, I just want there to be a little bit more of a bright pink color, then you can just take a nice uh, light wash of pink and plop that right in there. Here you go. Thank you. And if you're having a harder time mixing these colors, just remember that like this fleshy color that we're that we're doing that we're going for, it's really it's it's hard to get. It's a hard thing. So just kind of um, be kind to yourself and be aware and just know that like this is a little bit more of a difficult color to achieve. And I mean, gosh, this is probably the third or fourth time I've painted this pig and it's a different color than my first one. And that's going to happen because we're mixing the colors as we go. So love your pig. Love your pig no matter the color. Okay? Don't love them. You can always have bacon. You can oh. always have bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be sorry. That was great. <laughs> okay, and I'm working on this shadow here. So we're still on step three. Yeah, still on step three, putting in those shadows, those shadings in. You might be kind of getting to the end here. We are like, okay, I'm ready to move on with my eyeball. I'm going to do one more layer around the ears and then I'm going to do my um, nostrils and um, eyeballs. Step four, almost. Just trying to round out his nose a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I would do another shadowed area on the ears. We want those suckers to be um, darker. Okay. My ears too? Yes. Well, I would actually, oh, sorry. sorry, no, you're fine. I would actually add a little bit touch more pink 
to this top part here okay. and the edges of okay. your, I mean, it doesn't have to be straight pink, but maybe blend in. So okay. it's like a softer pink because like this part here is looking a little, um, looks flat or something. Yeah. Like what's the, what's the word? I mean, I feel like I said anemic last time and that could <laughs> be offensive. What's the word I'm looking for? What? Pasty. Pasty. Yeah. Or yeah. Like just not. Okay. So just add a little bit of color in there, yeah. Uh, Judy said she runs out trying to duplicate the colors for the rest of the tib, uh, pig. Any tips? Um, I, I don't, the only thing is like, there are some um, watercolorists who like will mix their batches of paint before they start and they just kind of mix enough to get them through the painting. Um, those painters are very organized and I'm just not that person. I'm not that way. So I just mix colors as I go. And if the color slightly changes as I go, I embrace that change and I just go with it and I'm okay with it and I move on. Um, I understand that some people are not that way. So if you are not like that, then maybe just try mixing colors beforehand. You can even like test them out on a piece of paper and just mix, have those already mixed sections on your palette in larger areas so you can pull from that depending on what area you're painting. Oh, that's way pale, Sue says pale. pale. That's the word that's I'm looking for, word. pale. That's a great word. Very similar to pasty. It was close. <laughs> okay. Never <laughs> Usually Molly comes in with our one worders here, but I, you're a little I'm quiet over there. Normal. I'm trying to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> Molly's like, I'm busy here, okay? I'm working. <laughs> I'm painting. Okay. So I feel pretty good about my pig. He's got some form, he's got some shading, he's got color. We got a lot of stuff going on here, but I can tell what he looks like. I can tell he's a pig. And that's really the goal here. You know what I mean? If you can paint something that you can tell what animal it is, you did that's it. That's a good day. That's a good day. If it's not quite there, it's just called, that's called abstract art. <laughs> and my right? two ears are totally different. Well, <laughs> something. But that's okay. Wait, what's going on? I just noticed my ears are two to, to, sort of different colors. Oh yeah, mine but are too. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> ears are going to be different colors. Different Chins are going to be different colors. That's okay. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to the detail step. Okay, I'm moving on to the eyeballs and the nostrils and the um, mouth. Sorry, I had to think for a second. Okay, now what you want to make sure of before you add these black areas is that your painting is dry. Because if it's wet around the eyeballs or the nose or the mouth and we go in with that thick black or that strong black, it's going to bleed out everywhere. And I mean, it's not the end of the world because you can try and pick it up with your paper towel, but it's just so much easier if your painting is on the drier side. So kind of like um, move around. You can, I, I usually like to touch to test or I mean Molly's you can see there's a pretty strong glare on some of that so you're yeah. like okay that's really wet I'm just not going to go there now so just kind of wait yours looks dry mm -hmm. yours looks like you're ready to go okay oh before we move to the black one thing I want you to do is I want you to take a brush and those little sections that are by the nose I want you to blend into those so there is a color to them, but a very light color, which is why we're doing this kind of last. Now, the reason why we have this is that um, pigs' noses are moist, so there is going to be a little bit of a, a glare on them because of the moisture. It's the same thing with dog noses and whatever animals have wet noses. There's gonna be just sections that are lighter, um, almost white, and that's from the glare from the moisture. Okay. If I'm not getting any color at all in there, should I add something? If you're not getting any color at all, just do a super, super soft wash okay. of maybe a light pink. Okay. Yep. I was able to get a little bit of color in there, but it should be, it should be noticeably lighter. Okay. So I'm going to do my mouth first and my mouth is dry. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna turn my pig a little bit because it's easier for me to do straight lines um, across as opposed to, um, I don't know what I'm saying. It's just easier for me to turn my paper when I'm doing a straight line. So turn your paper if you would like. And I'm just going to do really thin, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a really soft thin line for the mouth. Now to get a thin line uh, when you're painting, uh, you're gonna use a smaller brush. So I'm moving to my round two and I'm gonna do super light pressure. And you can practice on your practice sheet if you want to do that a couple of times. You can see here that um, this is a super light pressure line, okay? And this is when I'm pressing down a little bit. And this is when I'm pressing down really hard. So you can see that we can get different thicknesses with this paintbrush. So if you want to practice a couple strokes on a scratch paper before you put in your mouth line, feel free to. But it's just, it's all about the pressure, how hard you're pressing pushing your brush down. And so when we do thin lines, we just wanna make sure that we're like almost barely touching our brush to the paper. And I'm just gonna follow this outline. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And then I'm gonna fill in this little um, hole in the mouth. It kind of makes it look like he's smiling, doesn't it? Yeah, he's a happy pig. He's a happy pig. The pig life. The pig life, that's right. <laughs> I didn't choose the pig life. The, life <laughs> the pig chose life me. chose me. <laughs> Let's get shirts, you guys. Okay. That's I'm great. <laughs> okay, so I did my mouth. I'm gonna go back to that and kind of blend out that line, but I want it to dry a bit first. So I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna move on to the nostrils. Nostrils, now, and I know this might sound funny, but even um, within ear holes and nose holes and all of these things, there's still a value change within those. There's still an area that's super dark and then it kind of gets lighter as it goes out. So when you're doing these nostrils, you're gonna do, you're gonna, on the inside part, the part that's towards the center is gonna be our darkest part. On both sides. And then you kind of um, just get your, you clean your brush out, you get it damp, and then you're just gonna spread the rest of the way. So it, it's like gets a gray tint on the, on the outside edges, on both sides. Now, if you go to blend and it's super wet and it just blends all the way out, that's okay. Don't stress about it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wait a minute. Yeah, Molly, yours is looking pretty wet. It is quite wet. That's cool though. You just, just wait a got second. Done in the rain outside. He's having a great time. I feel. Yeah. He's nice and cool. Yeah. Super cool. Super flat. Super flat. Good Super looking pig. pig. <laughs> okay. So I did my nostrils. I did my mouth, and I'm gonna move to the eyeball. Can they see the eyeball? Do I need to move this at all? We're good? Okay. So for the eyeball, I'm gonna take my black. I'm gonna outline the back edge of the eyeball, so like the top part of the eyelid. Remember to get that light pressure. And then I'm gonna do the bottom part, but I'm not gonna connect it. Like I'm just gonna do the bottom, when I go to outline this, bottom part, I'm not gonna follow this line all the way to the corner. I'm just gonna kinda do like the back part here and have that stop right there. And then if you're seeing this close up, there's almost like three sections, right? We have the bottom part and then we have the glare spot in the middle and then we have this top part. Now what we want is we want that bottom chunk to be black. We want that middle circle to be the glare dot. So we're gonna leave that white. And then this top part, we're gonna turn into a gray. Um, and that's because even around like eyeballs, there's always a glare because they're moist. And then even near that glare, there's a lighter value. So let's start with our bottom part of the eyeball first. 
and I'm just going to end this like pupil part. I'm not going to go all the way on the eye. There's still a little, see how there's this little white chunk on the right hand side? You want to leave that there. You want to leave that. That's the actual white part of the eye. This is my favorite part is like doing, putting in the details. Yeah. You know? Well, these finishing details, this is what makes your pig because up until this point, you're like, I'm not really sure how this guy is going to turn out. But when you put them in, they're like, oh yeah, that's totally a pig. Okay. I, I actually, whenever I do details at home, like with black, mm -hmm. I just use like a fine Sharpie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great a idea. Easier, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome to use pens or, you know, whatever fine tipped. There's even smaller paint brushes than a round two. I think actually you're using a one. Yeah. And they even have smaller ones than ones if you want like a super fine um, tip. Now I'm gonna let this dry a little bit before I do that gray part on the top. I'm gonna move to the other side of the eyeball. And this eyeball, um, it's, we're, we're seeing it from the side, so it's not a full eyeball, so it's not gonna have that like glare. So it's basically just kind of like the hint of an eye since it's kind of turning away from us. So we're gonna do a black part underneath here. And then rinse your brush out, similar to how we did the nostril. It's just going to be a light gray on the outside of it, just like that. Okay, and because I like to be, I like to kind of move around my painting as I'm waiting for areas to dry. So while this eye dries before I finish it up, I'm going to move back to my mouth. And I'm going to take my brush, my liner, I mean, not my liner, my round two brush. I'm going to get it damp. And then I'm just going to go along the bottom part here and kind of just blend out this black line just a little bit because this lip is casting a shadow on the um, lower lip. And that's why we're kind of blending out this black line. And it's just a soft blend. Um, we should, it still should be kind of darker right on that outline, but we want to blend it out just a little bit so it's not such a strong outline. We just want to give it a little bit of shadow. Oh, I need to wash out my nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> yep, okay. <laughs> Need to wash out my nostrils, is that what you said? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do the other, this top part of the eyeball here. So I got this heavy black bottom. I have that white center for the glare. And then just using a damp brush and the black that's already there, I'm just going to spread that black out into that top area. So it's like a light gray. Just like that. <laughs> Here, let me help you. Let me tell you why. Okay, so um, Courtney is putting in her eyeball. So what's happening here is you are leaving a lot of white space around the entire okay. part, which okay. is why it looks piercing, right? Right, right? It's like piercing looking at you. So all you have to do is just add more black. Okay. You want to fill out the black so it goes all the way to the bottom part of this outline. Oh, okay. Now we're still going to leave a little white space on that right hand side. Okay. Just like that. Oh, that looks better. Yeah. And then when that dries, you're going to fill in that top part with the gray. With the gray. Okay. And that's going to, that's going to shape your eye a little bit better. So it's oh, not that so. Oh, funny. That little thing. <laughs> yes. Just made it totally. Yeah. Didn't look so evil. Have you ever seen Willow? Willow? It's like an old movie. Like... Oh, wow. No. Al Kilmer. Yes. hundred years ago. <laughs> and they have pigs on that and they're like demon pigs. Oh, are. I don't know. Gosh, I don't, I don't, know. don't know, but I'm going to have to check that out. Demon pigs. <laughs> okay. So I'm feeling really good about my eyes and my nostrils and my mouth. Those details are looking great. So if you're up with us, you could be done at this moment. You can be like, my pig looks great. Just while I was painting, I noticed a couple of areas that I'm just going to retouch. Um, they might 
be informative for you or they might not because you might be fine. But um, I'm going to kind of touch up my nostril a little bit because I want it to still stand out from the side of the snout right here. So I'm just going to add a, a slightly different color to that so it kind of stands out a little bit. So I'm just taking a, a wash and kind of going over this nostril so it, I mean the snout. So it just sticks out just a little bit more, different color. How's your shading come al coming along? It's looking it's good. Right. No, it's looking good. I just feel like I'm missing a step. Well, you did have to wait for your stuff to dry. Yeah. Okay, let me see. And my hair's got stuck on his <laughs> <laughs> We embrace that, Molly. Leave the hair, leave the hair. <laughs> I'm just kind of working up this bottom lip a little bit more. There he is. Oh, that looks good. He's looking happy. He's like, yes. Okay. Uh, Did somebody say I'm struggling with the right eye? It's, it's like a black circle tip. Yeah, so the right eye is actually really funky. And I can um, put it over here if you want to do a close up. It's just like a black oval, pretty much, with one side being gray and the other side being. Can they see that? Uh, right in there, yeah. Good? We got a hand in the way. Oh. All right. My right hand? There. Okay. So, I mean, if you focus in on this eye, it looks funny. Okay, so this is, this is what it's supposed to look like, but when your painting is all said and done and it's kind of stepped away from you, you're like, okay, that's just a, we're just doing a hint of an eye on that side, so it's not gonna be nearly as worked up as this other eye over here. So um, just to kind of go over the left eye, we outlined the top and the bottom. We left a little bit of a white section on the, the right side and that's because we're, that's the white of the eye itself. We did pitch black on the bottom part of the pupil. We left a white dot for the glare and we did a light gray at the very top. And the, and the, yeah, and the right eye is just like a black oval pretty much. There's no glare. There is not as much shape or dimension, and that's okay because we're only seeing a sliver of it since this pig's head is turned um, to the side of us. Yep, now I would add that gray in. Gosh, I love how smiley this pig is. It just makes me happy. He's pretty good. Every time I see him, I'm like, look at him. Okay, how are you guys doing? Are we getting close to showing people? Because I think mine's done. I feel good about him. Yeah, yours looks great. It's looking good. Now Molly's was a little bit further behind us because hers was super wet, but her colors are great. Oh yeah. So. Oh, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Molly, get to a spot where we can hold it up because I think we're ready to hold them up. Let me just absorb some of this ear fluid. Yeah. <laughs> Ear wax. <laughs> Let's absorb some of this ear fluid. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's so cute. He's cute. Okay. Actually, I'm going to do a light gray to the top of yours if that's okay. Because Molly's pig is looking a little bit surprised. And that's just because that's just because there's a lot of white on this top part. So I'm just going to put that gray in. That looks great. And that will give our oh, eye a little yeah. bit more. Isn't it somehow like a little? It's so funny how a little bit of Tiny something does really it. does make a difference. There we go. Oh, he, <laughs> he makes me so happy. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of shape this, round it out a little bit more. Yours looks so Mine has a beady cute. eye. I should have done a bigger eye. Okay. I love it. Okay, Jake, we ready to hold our. All right, Molly. Yep. 
Okay. Yay. Here we go. Right there? Yeah. Hold them up. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you guys, they look awesome. They all look different. They're all different colors and they all have different expressions. It reminds me of the bunny and giraffe. Oh, yeah. Because oh, all yeah. of them had like different personalities. So, um, whatever personality your pig is. Oh, wait, Molly, what's your pig's name? Mine's Rosie. What did I say mine was? Um, piggy. Piggy Tuscadero. Piggy Tuscadero. <laughs> Molly? I'm feeling really. She's put on the spot here. She yes. is put on the spot. Maybe. Happy yeah. Harry the Hog. <laughs> Harry so post your pig, post your pig, and name your, your name. and the name of the pig. I want to see it. <laughs> Everybody wants to know. Yeah. Um, I love when we name our painting animals. It's so great. So you, you are welcome to post pictures in the comments here. We also have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Together where you can post your projects. Um, people give you uh, feedback and they um, compliment you and we're really kind of building each other up. I absolutely love that. I love the community we're building and you guys are so awesome for doing that. Um, again, that's called Let's uh, Make Art Together on Facebook. So you can go ahead and join that. If it's on Instagram, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art and uh, we'll see that. And um, just thank you for painting with us. And next week, will you hand me that, Courtney? Oh, of course. We are painting this landscape, Ooh. this beautiful barn landscape. I think we have a theme Ooh, here. It's pretty. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. country, country barn theme. So, uh, we're releasing the tutorial for this tomorrow. You're welcome to paint this a few times and practice it before we get together live next Tuesday to paint it together. Come with questions. Um, you are more than welcome to email me or message me for feedback. I would be happy to look at your paintings. Um, and I think, oh, and if you want to order the September box, I know we haven't announced the projects yet. Uh, I think I'm going to start hinting at them in the next couple of days, but you have until the 25th to um, order that September box. So keep that in mind as we go. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Yay. Good job, everybody. Yay.